It's Halloween, and England's 2015 wine harvest is nearly finished, so it seemed a good time for a road trip to the beautiful Sussex countryside to get a glimpse of what remains of this year's vintage. Today I'm visiting the boutique sparkling wine producer of Hoffman and Rathbone, located in England's southeast corner in East Sussex. I arrived just in time to catch a delivery of freshly harvested Chardonnay grapes. The grapes looked healthy and perfectly ripe, and the harvest crew seemed happy with today's fruit. This Chardonnay harvest marks the tail end of this year's vintage. By all accounts, 2015 looks like it will be another good English sparkling wine vintage. A couple of the workers head back to the vineyard to get another load of newly picked grapes. So with a little time on our hands, it seemed a good opportunity to catch up with winemaker Ulrich Hoffman and find out more about Hoffman and Rathbone. At Hoffman and Rathbone, we are producing around 10,000 bottles a year, which is very small. So we're truly, you know, producing boutique exclusive uh, English sparkling wines, a range of three wines, um, a rosé, a classic cuvée, and a blanc de blanc, which are aged between two and five to six years on the lease in the cellar. So we emphasize very much on the long lease aging. Uh, and that really makes a difference um, with the English grapes and wines and the long aging to really uh, put things together. Mm. English wines or grapes, they are naturally a little bit, maybe a little bit more acidic or the acidity is different to the one in Champagne. And um, I, I think uh, that the key to, um, to get, a, get, a, get a round and, and, and smooth sparkling wine, English sparkling wine, is to, to really emphasize on the long, on long lease aging, on the traditional bottle fermentation, the long lease aging. Um, it really uh, helps the wine uh, come together. Hoffman and Rathbone have only been in operation for about five years. But in terms of English sparkling wine production, that isn't insignificant, considering that the first Champagne-inspired English estates began in the 1980s. Today, there are about 135 wineries and 2,000 hectares under vine, with a little over 6 million bottles produced a year, of which about 66% of the production is sparkling wine. Consequently, the Champagne varietals of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are by far the most cultivated grapes. Despite English sparkling wine's short history, it's fair to say that its wines are already world class. In fact, in the last 16 years, English sparklers have won eight trophies for best international sparkling wine and six trophies for best sparkling rosé in global competitions. Well, it looks like the press is almost filled up. So what happens after the grapes are pressed? So here we are in our tank room after the grapes have been a whole bunch pressed and uh, the juice goes in one of those tanks to be settled overnight and then the clear juice being racked off to uh, start the fermentation the next day. We ferment our wines very cold for a long period to really force the, uh, the aromas and uh, it takes around uh, two to two and a half weeks um, for the wines to ferment. We have uh, a lot of small tanks, so well, we have uh, different uh, vineyard sites and um, each vineyard is a, uh, it grows a little bit different and um, by having a lot of small tanks uh, we can uh, uh, we harvest at different times uh, the red mostly comes in before the the white and um, it gives us the, ch the chance to keep every every little plot we have um, separate to each other and also splitting in between the varietals that uh, enables us to then blend at a later stage as we require Next on the tour is a visit to the barrel room, where both the primary and the secondary fermentation of the estate's wines take place. This is the room where the magic and the bubbles at Hoffman and Rathbone are made. Winemaker Ulrich Hoffman took a moment out of wine harvest to describe a little more about his selection of fizz. Here at Hoffman and Rathbone we produce three wines. We produce a classic cuvee, a rosé and a, and, a, and a blanc de blanc. Our classic cuvee is a blend of uh, Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir based, 30% uh, Chardonnay and 10% Pinot Meunier. We traditionally bottle ferment the wine and uh, keep it on the lees, aging in the cellar for three years. When we disgorge the wine, we add a little bit of dosage to balance the acidity. Uh, with this wine, nine grams a liter. Uh, after disgorgement, we like to keep the wine six to 12 months on the cork to uh, let the wine you know, settle and come back together and get a bit of uh, maturity. Our second wine 
is our Rosé, which we now released uh, the second uh, year, the 2011, is currently available. This wine is 85% uh, uh, Pinot Noir with 15% uh, barrel fermented Chardonnay in there. It uh, a was aged 29 months on the lease. We reduced the dosage while disgorgement uh, to 7 grams per litre because our wines have a lot of fruit and, and, and sweet, sweet and richness from the fruit so that again the dosage is only for, for balancing. Um, and another uh, 9 to 12 months on the cork before the release. Uh, our third wine is the Blanc de Blanc, which is 100% Chardonnay. It's a blend of uh, seven different parcels of Chardonnay grapes. We uh, went down with the dosage while the Scorchman on this one as well to seven grams. It was aged uh, four or just over four years on the lease and it really helped it, uh, you know, s soften it out, giving some nice complexity. Uh, this wine just won recently uh, the Canter Gold Award. Before leaving, I wanted to find out a little bit more about the English terroir and how Hoffman and Rathbone came to be. The main reason I'm coming is that my wife is British and she's the Rathbone and the Hoffman and Rathbone. And uh, so after working abroad for many years, um, we decided to settle somewhere. And uh, in England, you know, seemed the ideal thing to jump on the wagon and, um, uh, you know, be part of this uh, young industry. You know, we, we are still in experimental status here. We can uh, experiment with, with different uh, techniques and methods. We don't have to stick to the traditional champagne rules to make an English sparkling wine. It's very good soil here. We grow our grapes on uh, clay and sandstone. The climate is very similar to the one in the Champagne region. Uh, we are surrounded by the sea, so uh, it gives a nice cool breeze at night times and a good warmth. It's clear that though the English wine industry is in its infancy, that the future for English wine, especially for English sparkling wine, is very bright. But anywhere where top-level fizz can be produced has my vote. It's now time to leave the team at Hoffman and Rathbone to their work. Special thanks to Ulrich Hoffman and everyone at Hoffman and Rathbone. And don't forget to give English sparkling a try. Until next time, bye bye.